put that over here and smoke it. So. Another video for Kings of War, and this time we are looking at the Ratkin Slaves. The Ratkin Slaves, as was said in the previous video for the Ratkin, were created by the Abyssal Dwarves. The Abyssal Dwarves like to experiment on themselves, on other races, see what fits together or what holds together, hopefully as much as possible. This, the Ratkin Slaves are more what you would expect to find with with the Ratkin in a sense these were made by a specific um, abyssal dwarf called if I can find the name uh, Golek Skin Flayer it was basically working in his forges for months, I think perhaps years, we'll have to check the background. Um, and when they came, he came out, the Rat King came out, so a lot of them stayed with the Abyssal Dwarves, mainly because out of fear or because they couldn't get away fast enough, a lot of them ran off, did their own thing. So if you're following along, You'll need to be in the main rulebook on page 321 and in the Uncharted Empire's 3rd edition book, page 96. They are evil. Their special upgrades, there are two. The first one is Throne Mastiff, or Mutated Throne Mastiff, I suppose. This unit is equipped with a single-use ranged attack with the following profile. Throne Mastiff, 12-inch range, 8 attacks, piercing 1. This attack always hits on a 4+. Once used, the unit's thrown Mastiff is destroyed and cannot be used again for the remainder of the game. It's not a bad upgrade, gives you a cheap uh, shooting option if you take it. I think it's not bad, especially for Dwarves. Chances are you'll be shooting this before you charge in, so if you can take it, I'd say take it. Next one is The Last Breath. When the unit suffers a rout result, all units engaged with it suffer 2d3 hits at piercing 2. These hits are resolved by the player who routed the unit with the last breath rule, who now has to grudgingly, we sure, resolve the hits against their own units. Which isn't a bad option, it's a little bit expensive, and um, I can see the point in it, to be honest. The thing with it is that have have your Ratkin units hoarded out and it will take the mages to die but they will die their defense is a little bit squishy a little a little bit low uh, the last breath will mean whatever's attacking them chances are they will have taken a fair few wounds to begin with so the last breath will either finish them off or make it easier for your abyssal dwarf stuff to come in and finish them off so starting with the infantry, starting with the slave wretches and they are irregular. Speed 6, melee 5+, plus, defense 2+, plus. horde 25 attacks, nerve 18, 21, 115 points. Legion 30 attacks, nerve 24, 27, 170 points. And they can take the last breath 15 points. It's not a cheap upgrade like I said, but I, th I think it's worth it considering if you put them, even if you put them on a horde, a nerve of 1821, they ain't going to be moving for a couple of turns. Yes, they've got defence too, but that nerve value. A legion is going to be really hard to shift. Um, I mean, put, I'd, if I was having them as legion, I'd always put it on that. It's less than 200 points for the, the 20, 24, 27 and 30 attacks. So, 
mm, they're not bad your problem is you can't they're regular so you can't just have an army of them but then again that's what the ratkin are for if you want to do that road go ratkin next we have the sleeve warriors and they also irregular speed six melee three plus defense four plus regiment 12 tax nerve 1214 85 points Horde, 25 tax, Nerve, 1921, 140 points. And they can take the last breath for 15 points. Um, yeah. Uh, slave Warriors are kind of like the Slave Wretches, except a bit better defence-wise. Nerve is a bit better, although you can't Legion them out, which is a shame. Uh, they're a bit more expensive than the Wretches, if you take them Horde be Horde. But they're still pretty good. If you want something a bit more defensive, then you go with the Slave Warriors. Other And the defence is a bit better. Other than that, you take the Wretches. The Wretches, you can have them as a Legion for 170 points or 185 if you take the last breath, which I'd always do. If it were me, I'd always do. Um, it's something to think about. I'd, yeah, I'd probably always take the Wretches, if I'm honest. Next, we have the Black Souls. Speed 4, melee 4 plus, defence. 5 plus troop 10 attacks nerve 10 12 100 uh, sorry 75 points not 175 just 75 points regiment 12 attacks nerve 14 16 115 points horde 25 attacks nerve 21 23 190 points vicious in melee exchange shield for 200 weapons lowering defense to 4 and gaining crush strength 1 for free not a bad upgrade throwing mastiff for 15 points again not a bad upgrade because their speed is 4 and the Throne Mastiff is 12 inch range, their, tw their charge range is 8, so you might as well use it before you charge in, cause a few wounds, it's not bad. I would have the Black Souls as a Regiment or a Horde, at least you can unlock stuff without having them as a troop, I don't feel has much point for me. Next we have the Immortal Guard, speed 4, melee 3 plus defence. 5 plus. Troop 10 attacks nerve dash 13 105 points. Regiment 12 attacks nerve dash 17 160 points. Uh, the, can take throwing mastiff for 15 points. Bit more expensive than the black souls but obviously they're a lot better. Uh, hitting capabilities is better. They're fearless and the nerve is a bit better overall and they've got regeneration 5 plus which is not a bad upgrade. Um, take them as a, I'd always take them as a regiment if it were me. Um, another dash 17 with regeneration 5 plus, that's going to be a bit hard to shift. Plus, also before you charge in, you can also throw a mastiff at them just for quick measure. Next, we have the Abyssal Berserkers speed 5, melee 3 plus, defense 3 plus, troop 12 attacks, nerve. Dash 13, 105 points. Regiment, 15 attacks. Nerve, dash 17, 165 points. Crush rank 1, vicious in melee, wild charge D3. I don't know why the troop ain't got way more attacks than that. I'd have thought because they're a um, berserker type unit, like the um, Sister Hood on foot or the Reapers, they're kind of the same sort of vein. Um, I don't know why they haven't got about 20 attacks as a troop and like 25 as a regiment, but hey ho. Um, bad at all they've got crush strength one they've got the vicious and the wild charge they hit on threes in close combat the fearless i'd probably take them as a regiment so that the nerves not bad if they had more attacks i'd say take them as a troop but at least they're not irregular so you can just have an army of them if you want next we have the ranged infantry and they are the decimators and in this list they are regular Speed 4, melee 4+, plus, range 4+, plus, defence 4+. Plus. Troop, 10 attacks, nerve, 10-12, 115 points. Regiment, 15 attacks, nerve, 14-16, 155 points. Horde, 25 attacks, nerve, 21-23, 260 points. Blunderbuss is 12-inch range, piercing 1, steady aim, vicious at range. Uh, regiments and hordes only can take a single-use range attack. Um, mobile Kashushin, I should. 24 inch range, 3 attacks, hits on 4s, blast d3, indirect, reload, vicious at range, for 20 points. Basically gives you the option of having a um, handheld rocket launcher, essentially. 
Um, it's not bad, I suppose. Blast D3 with three attacks. Minimum hits of one, maximum hits of nine. Um, that's not bad. I suppose you've got the option there. Um, b -b 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 hasn't got any piercing on it, which is odd. And you can't move and shoot with it. And you can't use it within 12 inch range. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I won't use the mobile Kashushin. It's a waste of 20 points. I have the decimators probably as either a troop or a regiment. Normally I'd say for a range unit just have it as a troop, but they're only 12 inch range. So you are going to have to keep moving. You've got steady aim, which is a good thing. Move and shoot on fours, which is great. As a regiment, it's the nerve that's holding you together. Yes, your attacks aren't that great, but at that short range, you, you kind of need a, need a good nerve value in it. A nerve of 14, 16, it's not too bad. You've also got ray, vicious at range and piercing one, which is always helpful. Next, we have the cavalry. They are the Abyssal Half-Breeds. Speed 8, melee 3 plus, defense 4 plus. Troop, 8 attacks, nerve, 11, 13, 130 points. Regiment, 16 attacks, nerve, 14, 16, 200 points. Crush Strength 1, Regeneration 5 plus, Thunderous Charge 1, Vicious in melee. These are a light cavalry, which aren't too bad. I take them as a true, well, take them as a troop or regiment, ain't too bad, but I take them as a regiment more than a troop. Their attacks are better, the nerves better. It's 200 points, which ain't cheap, but Crush Strength 1 and Thunderous Charge 1 and Vicious in Melee hitting on threes. The only downside, granted, is the nerve is only four. I mean, the defense is only four, so that is a problem. But at a speed of eight, they can get where they're going pretty quickly. Don't rely on them to be the sole unit to take out everything, but use use them to support your units, uh, have them flanking round, which if you take some slave wretches to slam foot in the, in the front, have the abyssal half-breeds to come round the side perhaps, you know, you, you've got that option. Next we have the chariots, and they are the slave tunnel runners. Speed 8, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Troop 16 attacks, nerve 12, 14, 170 points. Regiment 24 attacks, nerve 14, 16, 210 points. Crush strength 1, thunderous charge 1. These are kind of like the Beetle half breeds, but their base size is bigger because chariots. Um, a lot of attacks, even taken as a troop with 12, 16 attacks. Th crush strength 1, thunderous charge 1. That's not bad, but a regiment of them. 24 attacks, it's, it's just no brainer. Nerves a little bit low, but considering what they are, that's kind of understandable. And at 210 points, a little bit expensive, but again, for what they are, kind of ex, ex understandable. Um, I'd use them in the same way as the Abyssal Half Breeds. And to be honest, the Slave Tunnel Runners are a little bit better in most circumstances. The only difference is the Abyssal Half-Breeds have got Vicious, they've got Regeneration, and they hit on threes rather than fours. Other than that, they are very, very similar. The Slave Tunnel Runners are a bit more expensive, but they've got defense of five, and they've got more attacks. So, do you want something that can punch people a little bit more efficiently? Abyssal Half-Breeds. Do you want something that might, may take the hits a bit more? Rather giving a number of attacks, a greater number of attacks out, slave tunnel runners. Next, you have the swarms. There's only one, and it is the vermin tide, and they are regular. Speed 6, melee 5 plus, defense 3 plus. Regiment 9 attacks, nerve 9 11, 65 points. Horde 18 attacks, nerve 12 14, 110 points. They've got nimble, vicious in melee, wild charge D3. Um, I'd probably take them as a horde, 18 attacks, 110 points, which isn't bad. Wild Charge D3, Vicious and Nimble, they isn't bad. It's, as a swarm, it's got the major downside that most swarms have, low defence and low hitting capability. But 
as a unit that's just there to harass enemies and it's small it's not going to get shot at that often there is options to take it um you could do a multi charge on the flanks have them go around with say um the abyssal half breeds for instance it's it's a bit of a long shot i can't grant you but it's some it's something you might want to do um even have them as a cheap 65 point regiment i in fact i'd probably do it like that actually um you could have them taking well uh Charging in while your opponent's taking an objective, get a few hits in, take a few wounds in, probably die. But at 6 to 5 points, life is cheap. Next we have the large infantry, and they are the slave nightmares. Basically, rat ogres. Speed 6, melee 4 plus, range 4 plus, defense 5 plus. Regiment 9 attacks, nerve 11 13, 140 points. Horde 18 attacks, nerve 14 16, 130 points. Crush strength 1, vicious in melee. Uh, black cannons, which are 12 inch range, and steady aim. Um, they're all right, I guess. The thing is, you're comparing them to the, sla the uh, slave tunnel runners and the abyssal half breeds, they've got a range attack, and the range attack isn't bad, even though it's got no piercing, unfortunately. Um, they've got Vicious in melee, crush strength 1, it's not bad I guess. Um, standard attacks, standard defence, speeds, about standard. Um, they can be wavered which a lot of lava in infantry can't be wavered. Some can I grant you, but they usually have something else helping them and whatnot. Uh, apart from that ranged attack. Hmm. Uh, at least they're not a regular. You can have an army of them if you want, I guess. There's that option. Next is the War Engines, and it is the Kakushin, bless you, Rocket Launcher. Speed 4, range 5+, plus, defence 5+. Plus. 3 attacks, nerve 10-12, 8 to 5 points. It's 48 inch range, blast D3, ignores cover, indirect, piercing 1, reload, vicious at range. It's not a bad weapon, it's fairly cheap. Uh, 48 inch range, ignores cover, which is nice. Uh, piercing one, which is a bit low for war machine, but 8 to 5 points with three attacks, kind of understandable. Hitting on fives as well, which might seem a bit low, but three, you got three shots, so chances are you get you've got a chance of getting nine shots going off, which ain't bad, ain't bad at all. It's also got vicious at range, so you fail to wound, you get ones to wound, you can re-roll them, which is nice. Uh, can't hit, can't shoot within 12 inch range, which you've got stuff to back that up. You've got the nightmares, you've got the um, decimators to back it up in that sense. Um, yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. Next we have the monsters. There's only one, it is the slave dry, slave death engine impaler. It is a monster chariot, so chariot size brace. Speed 8, melee 4 plus, defense 5 plus. D6 plus 7 attacks, nerve, dash 16, 180 points. Crush strength 2, vicious in melee. It's not bad. It's not bad, I don't think. Uh, minimum of 8 attacks, maximum of 13 attacks, which isn't bad. Crush strength 2, again, pretty decent. Speed of 8 and vicious. It's also, it's also fearless. Um, 180 points ain't bad. Its main downside is that its nerve is a little bit low. Only a little bit, maybe by two two notches but apart from that it's not bad for its points value i don't think what you could do with it is outflank it you could have it charging in from the front because it doesn't rely on thunderous charge to get what it needs to do off fairly decently um you could have these rocking up supported by some abyssal half breeds some slave tall runners um or even have some slave wretches going in first and then have them have the um, death engine engine impalers coming in second. Um, that'd be one way to do it, I guess. That'd be one way. Next we have the heroes. Starting with the slave driver. Hero infantry. Speed 4, melee 4 plus, defence 5 plus. One attack, nerve 10, 12, 55 points. Individual inspiring, rally 1, slaves only. Vicious in melee. 
on its own you can't see the point it's more of a support option it's got inspiring which is nice it's more supportive for your slave units which there's quite a few in this list you've got the um, tunnel runners you've got the wretches you've got the warriors you've got the nightmares and you've also got the death engine impaler so you've got the options of making nerve really really big um if you have them if you have the slave driver supporting the slave wretches it makes the legion's nerve of 25 28 which is ridiculous even if you put them on a horde that's a nerve of 19 22 which again for 115 points well actually 100 and 170 points if you add the slave driver still not bad still not bad um obviously if the slave driver gets anywhere in combat it's gonna die but that's why you have it at the back of your your slave unit supporting if you go slave heavy which you kind this list kind of suggests you do take at least one or two slave drivers you won't regret it whatsoever next we have the overmaster hero with infantry speed 4 melee 3 plus defense 6 plus 5 tax nerve 13 15 105 points Crush Strength 1, Individual, Inspiring, Mighty, Vicious in Melee. Uh, can take infer Infernal Advance, you can only have one of these in your army. Gain Aura Strider, Infantry only, for 20 points. This unique upgrade cannot be taken in addition to a magical artifact. Um, means units can... Infantry can go over terrain a bit better, which isn't bad. Um, that applies to the Abyssal... Sorry, the Immortal Guard, the Black Souls the wretches and the warriors so hmm um it'd be really useful in this list on the slave wretches and the slave warriors because the amount of nerve and attacks they've got it were yeesh yeesh uh, it's also got inspiring on everyone and it's mighty so it is a road hump 105 points ain't bad for a um, hero roadblock so i'll i'd consider it i'd consider it in this list Next we have the Ironcaster, Hero Infantry, Spellcaster Rank 2. Speed 4, melee 4 plus, defence 5 plus. 1 attack, nerve 11, 13, 105 point, 110 points. Sorry. Individual Inspiring, Hellforged only. Uh, Argul's Flame, whenever this unit r rolls to damage with a fireball it can re-roll all dice that score a, a natural unmodified 1. Comes with fireball 10, heal 3, Hellforged only, as standard. Um, the heal 3 on the Hellforge, it's not going to have much options for that. Um, you've got the... Um, you've got the... You haven't really got anything. Um, so the heal's pointless on this one. Um, is it? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, completely pointless unfortunately uh can change bait and chant 2 for 20 points an upgrade that's definitely useful in this list uh lightning bolt 3 for 20 points um i'd leave that at home mind fog 2 for 15 points consider it i'd consider it surge 8 for 30 points or 3 if it replaces fireball um if your opponent's running the, this list i might tell them to yeah take that does nothing in this list absolutely does nothing so it's there absolutely pointless though absolutely pointless because there's no hellforged love stuff in a rack and slaves list absolutely none next we have the abyssal half-breed champion hero cavalry speed 8 melee 3 plus defense 5 plus Six attacks, nerve, 12, 14, 145 points. Crush strength through, individual, inspiring, abomination only. Mighty, regeneration, 5 plus, vicious in melee. That is useful on, because it's got inspiring on abomination stuff, it's useful on the overmaster on winged halfbreed, because that's an abomination, the abyssal halfbreeds, obviously, because they're abominations. Um, useful on the slave nightmares, actually, because they're abominations, huh? So you've got options for it actually. 
for support capabilities. It's not bad as a attack option either. Hits on threes in close combat, defense five, six attacks, crush strength two. Hasn't got mighty. Oh no, it has got mighty, sorry. Uh, it's got regeneration five plus and vicious in melee. It's a bit of an expensive road hump, but it's uh, if you're going heavy on the a um, abomination stuff, I think it's not not a bad option to take. Next is the Taskmaster on Chariot, Hero Chariot. Speed 8, melee 4+, plus, defense 4+, plus. 5 attacks, nerve 11, 13, 110 points. Inspiring, nimble, thunderous charge 2, vicious in melee. Uh, contain rally, rally 1, slave only, for 15 points. I don't know why it's not got that included, but it's not! <laughs> um, I'd always take the rally 1 option. It's it's really useful if you're taking a load of slave tunnel runners and slave death engine impalers because of their speed. Um, if you're not taking a lot of them, A, why not? They're pretty decent. And B, then you might as well just take the slave driver on foot. He's not that much slower than the slave wretches. And the, the rally is 6 inch range, so it can keep up even if he's moving at the double. Next we have the Overmaster on Ancient Winged Halfbreed. Speed ten, Hero Titan by the way. Speed 10, melee 3 plus, defense 5 plus. 9 attacks, nerve 17, 19, 300 points. Crush strength 3, flying, inspiring, nimble, regeneration 5 plus, vicious in melee. Uh, attacks are a little bit low, other than that it's fairly, fairly good. It's 300 points so it ain't cheap, but considering what it does, it's not going to be cheap. Hits on threes in close combat. Crush strength three. Fly. Inspiring. Nimble. Regeneration five plus. Most uh, dragon-like titans, or most titans actually, do not have regeneration. Um, it's only the really squiddy things that have regeneration. Um, I suppose you can count in the regeneration is why it's not less than 300 points. Uh, it's got inspiring on it, and its nerve's not bad. Uh, using games of only 200 points or more, I really would not take it in anything less. Next we have the unique units. There's only one and it is Golek Skinflayer, Hero Chariot. Speed 8, melee 3+, plus, defense 5+. Five, 5 tax, nerve, dash 16, 200 points. Crush strength 1, dread, nimble, rallying 2, slave only, thunderous charge 2, very inspiring, slave only, vicious in melee. It's a good support for your slave units. So your wretches, your warriors, your tunnel runners, your nightmares and your death engine impalers are kind of what he's best at going with. Uh, rally 2 means your wretches are going to have evil nerve. Example, the Legion, it's going to have a nerve of 26, 29. That's foul. And also, because it's very inspiring, the inspiring range for it is 9 inch. Um, if you're taking more Abyssal Dwarf stuff, he ain't your main support option, because he can't help them whatsoever. Um, as an attacking option, it's not bad either. A little bit expensive, but it hits on 3s, 5 attacks, Fearless with the Nerve 16, Thunderous Charge 2, Crush Strength 1, Dread's not a bad thing to have. It means things, enemies near it, um, reduce the nerve. It's not bad. It's more of a support option than anything else. But apart from that, it's, it's not bad. Don't charge him into close combat unless you have to. Although he, he can take care, care of himself if he needs to. Have him more of a support option. I can't stress that enough. And a, a speed of 8, he can support at many places. So you've, you've got options for him. You've got options for him. This is an army kind of like the Order of the Green Lady and the um, League of Rodia is a bit hard for me to talk about. The reason being is there's other versions that are similar that kind of work better. Um, the thing with this list is you've got your cheap basic troop options like your wretches and your warriors that you want them supported by things like the Decimators, the Bissell Half-Breeds, the Immortal Guard, and the Black Souls, and the um, Abyssal Berserkers. 
Or you could have it the other way around. These are sporting your dwarfy units. Have your slave units charging first, take the brunt of the damage, and then your abyssal dwarf stuff comes in and takes care of everything else. You could kind of, in that sense, say they kind of like the Night Stalkers, in the sense of the abyssal stuff is your smaller stuff. I'm sorry, the slave stuff is your smaller stuff, and the abyssal stuff is your bigger stuff. Have your slave stuff going f first and then charging and so on and if you don't take care of the abyssal stuff it's going to be the stuff that kills you i could be wrong but that's how that's how i read it um the weakness of them is that there isn't that much crushing strength from your base infantry which i'd imagine is what your main force is going to be your short range, apart from your war machine, is sh very short range. 12 inch for pretty much everything, apart from your yeah, ironcaster with his spells, obviously. Um, at least you've got things like the Death Engine Impalers and the Slave Nightmares, though. I take the Death Engine Impaler over the sla Slave Nightmares, to be honest, because the Impaler can't be wavered. That's, that's just me. So, that's my thoughts. I'm the Racking Slaves. Goodbye for now.